Okay, so they have re-established their team. They are down one of their Moskvas. One DFL are down to eight players. They have got one Moskva, one Des Moines, one Venezia, one Zao, one Shimikaze, one Smolensk, Montana, and a Kurfus. Shot maintaining their old lineup. So let's kick out, get into the game proper, get rid of this. I don't know why it keeps appearing. Let's go have a look at the deployments and see what this does for the team's tactics. So, Sugar and Invader, of course, leading the way out in their Summer's Destroys. And there's the port turn from Sugar. So we're seeing the break from him. Hard break, in fact. He's going right across Naboo's bow. And Naboo is going to have to stand on the rudder himself to avoid a collision. Invader, as before, making the early grab for point B. Rosser not altering his tactics. He's standing on the gas himself, blowing his engine boost and riding straight out to point A. Of course, we saw in the first attempt of this game that that is quite a long run out to get to a control point. Uh, Gutix pushing up. Tuku having to cross his bounds, slowing the deployment there, but running out in the curve first. Alabama 6 pushing to radar support on A, probably to tuck in behind this island here. And in the meantime, Invada continues his early run to point B. Of course, they know that there is now only one Moskva to deal with, so they can theoretically make a fairly rapid grab for B, and they don't necessarily have to worry too much about radar. There's the turn from Invada. He's looking to get his escape hole dug and ready. He'll go into the cat point stern first. That way, if there is a sudden and unwelcome radar or just shells whizzing around his ears, remember, they don't really know what the enemy's deployment looks like, then he can simply stand on the accelerator, break away at full speed. Meanwhile, Mokal and Nolant making do without a destroyer, taking a fairly steady route towards point C. They're not going straight in. They're taking, in particular, Morkal is taking a rather cautious route to set up fire support behind those islands on the Nine Line. And yet, no, Molmath is right behind him. Krakum drops his sea mines, starts running suppression in point B. He knows that something there, of course, the capture is in progress. So in Vada there, well, he'll finish the cap comfortably before the sea mines trundle their way in, but we'll see how it goes from there. Rossa, meanwhile, has dumped one salvo for suppression purposes, and the capture of B goes to Invada, giving shot an early advantage. Rossa, meanwhile, securing point A without too much complication himself. Of course, the extra run distance does mean that despite the speed advantage of the Shimikaze, he has got there significantly behind. And as a result, one DFL are now about 16 points down, which is not actually going to make a huge difference. Theoretically, shot would cap out about two seconds before the match ran out of time anyway. So we'll see how the developments go. Torpedoes in the water from the summers. Kratum, I don't know if Kratum was spotted or if those are just going out on general principles. But remember, Venezia gets no hydro search and also gets complimentary free underwear as the torpedoes run dry right before they get to him. Uh, I don't think that... Uh, Corsum Sugar was looking for damage there. I think it was more of a, hey, well, we're here. Okay, Nomath has dropped his torpedoes. Those will be probably the 12 kilometer option on the Zal, the 93 Mod 3s. Whether they've got the range is another matter entirely. Again, both teams, I think, are just trying to suppress with their torpedoes rather than do any actual damage. But hey, you do some damage, you get an early kill. It's all to the good, right? No real shots fired as yet, in fact. Both teams are on full health. We're seeing a very, very cautious uh, chasey, chasey, catchy, catchy, kissy, kissy. Although Rosson did take some early gunfire there. I think he got a little bit too close to Invada and caught a bit of five-inch fire on the side. Torpedoes running from Rosser again. Ooh, I don't know. Cyrex might note comfortably torpedo beats around the edge of that salvo. And Nabo is now in position to provide radar support as required. Shot currently two control points up. The pressure is firmly 
on one DFL. They have got about three minutes, really, to start turning around. And now we see the shells start to fly. Dinjo pushing out in the Venezia himself, takes a bit of early fire, stands on the rudder, and is using the Venezia's agility to try to break away from the focus gunfire that's coming his way. Gets out of it with a few thousand in scratch damage and possibly some scorch paint as well. I am not Groot, however, has taken primary hits and he is on fire. Don't know whether he's going to be able to control that or if he'll even bother. The Republic there currently down 20,000 and damage thus far relatively evenly spread as the teams start to engage. Of course, as the teams open fire, they reveal their positions. That attracts more return fire. And if you want to know how that can end, just go and ask the Akatsuki. So, Amazing Ho in the middle, trying to shore up point C, but taking a lot of damage for his trouble and in the meantime Ross the Center 3 has broken northeast and is flipping B for one DFL. The Summers of Invader is moving in in an effort to intercept and yep the engine boost is up so he is probably going to get into the control point that will lock it at one point all provided both sides remain in. So do we have a contact? No not really. Tukum 94 and the Kerfus and the Des Moines coming around the corner at point A. Now this is going to put Tom Syrex and Nabo in an interesting position. They can drop harassing fire on Tucker and they're doing a pretty solid job of that at the moment. He is currently down 25, in fact passing 30,000 health at the moment, torpedoes in the water. But positionally those two cruisers are now from a damage standpoint. Oof! Alabama gets absolutely chunked there as he met, tries to follow Tucker through the turn and discovers that the Des Moines does not in fact have a Kerfus armor plate. So Tom Sykes and Nabo temporarily out of the fight. They can of course wriggle into point A and start turning up the heat on that point there. And we have our first kill, Varon 360 catches Alabama with another long range Savo Invada there, flipping point B back just about manages to turn the damage there. So one DFL now, two boats down, despite only losing one, and it's one of their radar cruisers as well. Awesome is dug in on the island. His flank is secure, but well, it's a Stalingrad. He's bow on, provided nobody decides to overmatch him. He can do a lot of damage from there. And of course he also can provide radar support in to point B as it's required. Invader taking advantage of Tuku's blind charge towards point B. Torpedoes in the water. And I don't think that the Kerfus is going to dodge that even with Hydro. Nope, he's going to take two from the first, two, possibly three from the second. Uh, looks like it's going to be one. Nope, Torpedo beats one on the second. And he is going to. No, he almost Torpedo beat to the third. 5,000 health, 4,000, 4,002. Damage control is in effect, but is it going to be enough? And is his Hydro going to be able to pick up Invada? There we go. He's got Invada locked. You can see the gunfire. Repair party is in play, pulling him back past 11,000 health. Invada desperately trying to break away from the angry Kerfus and that six kilometer hydro. He's not going to do it. And the Summers goes down. Rossa and Tuku clearing point B and starting the cap, but they're paying a very heavy price for that. And in the meantime, gleefully unmolested, except some minor scratch damage. Nabo and Tom Sykes flip point A, and things are looking very rough for one DFL. Their Montana has gone down. They have lost both of their battleships. They are just down to their cruisers. Nolmath now takes his turn in the final line. The dominoes are, I think, starting to fall. Yep, there we go. Nolmath takes a solid hit to the flank, comes down to less than 5,000 health, gets his repair party going, but he is cross-fired at this point. He has got the Republic of I am not Groot in front of him. He's got the Venetia's semi-armor piercing and the Summers getting in on the act as well. He turns to angle against Venetia. I am not Groot blams shells right through the bow. Thank you very much. And that is the fourth ship down for only one loss on shot side. 
So Kratum, realizing perhaps how much trouble he's in, is breaking away. Morkul doing what he can with the Smolensk rapid fire guns, trying to get a burn onto Awesome. However, it's not looking good for one DFL, is it? They are two control points to one down, and they're going to get slowly throttled. You can see shots slowly, slowly closing the vice on them. The Venezia, the Worcester, and the Summers coming down from the south. They did manage to take down I Am Not Groot, however. So that heavy firepower in the north has gone as well, but they may not need it anymore. Fire focusing onto the Moskva, possibly. Interestingly, we're not seeing much fire coming from the three ships to the north. Sugar, of course, is in a destroyer and will be waiting for his torpedoes to reload. He doesn't want to get into a gunfight there. Smoke drop from Sugar. Looks like he's laying cover for Amazing Her to open up on the Moskva. That will leave Dinjo EU playing the bait. Assuming Chuck even lives long enough to return fire. He is taking this heavy grade armor piercing side. He ate about four broadsides before he even managed to return fire gears. Turrets back, shots out, and he is gone. The Venezia's armor piercing puts the death blow in. Almost simultaneously, Nabo 33 drops the Shimakaze. Rossa was making a hard run on the Republic. I don't know whether it was radar or simple proximity that got him. But at this point, it is down to Morkal and Khatum in the Venezia. And unless something very strange happens right now, I think we can call this one. So sh shots are over. Morkal doing what he can with the 130s of the Smolensk, but he's somewhat out of their best range there. And that is the game. Timer out and shot take a comfortable win.